Hey everybody, by the end of this video, you should be able to draw orbital diagrams and relate them back to uh, electron configurations. Now, before we get started into drawing orbital diagrams, there's three definitions or principles that I want to go over. Um, the first of which is called the off-bow principle. Okay, so the off-bow principle the off-bow principle. That means, um, th this is what we've used to make electron configurations. This is that the lowest energy orbitals fill first, regardless of, um, regardless of what we call them, whether we call them 3D or 4S or 7F or whatever. Okay, lowest energy orbitals um, fill first. Okay, the second principle is um, Hun's rule. Okay, Hun's rule. And Hun's rule states that electrons don't pair unless they have to. Okay, no pairing of electrons unless they have to. Okay. And you'll see how this works um, when we uh, when we do orbital or energy level diagrams. Okay, and the third one is going to be <coughs> Pauli the Pauli exclusion principle. And the Pauli exclusion principle states that electrons spin in opposite directions. Okay, now these last two, um, these last two things we haven't dealt with yet when we're doing electron configurations, because when we do the one s two two s two whatever, this all we're doing is filling the lowest energy. We actually can't see the individual orbitals until we look at the energy level diagram. So let's go through and build up uh, the elements on the periodic table, um, starting with hydrogen, just like we did with electron configuration. Okay, and so this is an orbital ener or energy level diagram. Okay, and so if we look at this energy level diagram, we can see that. And I tried to do this so that you could, um, so that, like. Um, energy was at the bottom, the lowest energy at the bottom of the picture. And then as we move away from the nucleus, you can see that the energy kind of gets bigger and bigger. And we, and then I stopped at like the fourth energy level, okay, or the fourth shell. We will, um, so we'll, we'll go through some of these atoms, okay, some of these elements. So just like we had to do when we were doing, um, electron configurations we have to know how many <coughs> how many um, um, <coughs> how many electrons we're putting in so let's start with hydrogen hydrogen has how many electrons it has one electron okay so where are we gonna using those three rules poly off bow and hund where are we going to put that one electron? Well, this is how we do this, okay? We put that one electron in here, and then we put it spin up like this, okay? We put it as a half-headed arrow, spin up, or pointing up. And so that that's how we um, indicate that it is spinning in one direction. And so that's... Um, that That is the lowest place we can put an electron, and it's spinning in one direction, okay? That's the story of my life, spinning in one direction. <laughs> Mr. Woody left. Um, so, anyways, let's do helium. Helium has two electrons. Again, we're gonna fill, and we're gonna put them in the lowest possible place. So we've put one in here, I'll redraw it. And now helium has two electrons. Well, we wanna fill the lowest energy orbitals or lowest energy places first according to off-bow which is the most important of those three rules 
And then, well, we have to pair it, so Hun's rule doesn't apply, but then the Pauli exclusion principle says that we have to spin in opposite directions. So we're going to add a second electron, and that electron is going to go pointing downward in the same orbital. Now, if we were to write the electron configuration of this, notice it's in the first energy level. It's an s orbital, and there's two electrons. So the, for helium, the electron configuration is 1s2. Okay? Okay. So let's build up. Now, um, let's skip over some and go to, um, let's go to nitrogen. Okay? Nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons. Okay? So if nitrogen has seven electrons, we have to put them somewhere following those three rules. Okay? So let me get rid of what we already have here. Let's see. So, okay. So we're going to put seven electrons someplace. Pauli off bow hund. So we're going to start off by putting an electron here and an electron here. Some people actually like orbital diagrams better than they like electron configurations because all you have you, it's kind of more mindless. You just have to kind of plug the electrons into um, into the lowest energy spot. Okay. Notice there's nothing more in the first energy level. So now just like we would see on the periodic table. We go from the first energy level up all the way down to this, all the way down to the second energy level. And notice we're going to go through the S's, which is this side. And then we're going to go over to the P's here. Okay. So let's do that. So now, okay, whoop, we go. So we're going to put an electron here. And again, off bow takes precedence. So we're going to fill the lowest energy first. We don't have to worry about Hund yet. And then Pauli says we're going to make it spin in opposite direction. But how many electrons have we placed so far? So far we've put four electrons in there. How many more does nitrogen have? Nitrogen has a total of seven electrons. Neutral nitrogen does. Okay. And so off bow principle says now we're going to go to the next lowest energy level. Well, the next lowest, or not the lo next lowest energy place, the next lowest energy place are these p orbitals. And th remember, there are three p orbitals. And so then Hund now says that if they don't have to, electrons aren't going to pair. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those three electrons, and we are going to not pair them, and we're going to put them in the one in each orbital. Okay? So <coughs> and so if we were going to do the electron configuration of nitrogen and it's seven electrons, look, it's 1s2, and then it's 2s2, 2s2. But all we see when we do the p's are 2p and then 3. We don't know where the three electrons are. But the orbital diagram shows that we have 1, 2, 3. We have one in each of the p orbitals. Okay? Now, let's see. What if we go to a different element? Let's go to the web elements, really good, um, really good element, uh, periodic table online. Um, let's go to, um, let's see, chlorine, okay? Chlorine with its 17 electrons. So we're, we're increasing rather rapidly here, okay? So we'll get rid of some of this stuff that we've already done here. Woo! Okay. Okay, and then we'll go to um, 17 electrons, and that's chlorine. Okay, so again, we are going to start here at the lowest energy. Then we're going to go to the next lowest energy, which happens to be in the second energy level, okay, or the second shell. Okay, and it, within the second shell, there are two types of orbitals. Okay, and now we're going to go to the next lowest place. The next lowest place is the P's. And notice that when I fill them, I'm going to fill them according to Hund by, by n not pairing them first. Even though I know that we're going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, we're going to eventually have 10, I still fill them individually first, and then I'm going to come back and fill them like this. Okay. So each half-headed arrow represents an electron. And so I follow Hund first, and then I follow Pauli. I spin them in opposite directions. So at this point, I've, I've filled 10 electrons, okay? 
I have seven more to go. Well, let's see here. So now we go here. One, two, off bow first. Okay. And now, let's see. So we've done 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's 17 electrons. And if we were going to write the electron configuration of chlorine, okay, we would we would go 1s2, right? Here's the 2. 2s2, 2p6. And now we would go up to 3s2 and 3p5. And when we go to the periodic table, look, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's the fifth one over. Okay. Is that a coincidence? No, that is not a coincidence. That is how the periodic table is organized. Okay. So now let's go down here to vanadium. Okay. Vanadium is a very, very interesting element. Well, it's not really all that interesting, but I'm going to tell you that it's interesting, and then that way you think it's interesting. Okay, so vanadium has 23 electrons. Okay, so bear with me on this, because I think that at this point, you can say that the first 17 are going to fill just like chlorine, okay? And so if the first 17 are going to fill just like chlorine, let's fill the 18. Okay, so we have filled 18 electrons just by doing chlorines. It saves me a little bit of time. Okay, but now where do we fill? And I tried to represent this here by showing the little dotted line that goes across. Off-bow principle says that we are going to fill the lowest energy orbitals first, or the lowest energy places first. Well, what's lower energy? The 4s's in orange or the 3d's? Well, the 4s's have slightly lower energy than the 3d's. So, and that is reflected on the periodic table, which again makes it a powerful tool for interpreting where electrons are. Because we go from the third energy level, the 3p's, and then look at where the periodic table goes next. It goes to the 4s's. And then you see the D's start to fill. Well, where is the first time you see D's? In what energy level do you see D's? You see them for the first time in the third energy level. So that means that starting with scandium, then we fill the three D's. And so then what's, what's yttrium on over? Those are the four D's and lutetium on over, five D's and lawrencium on over. Those are the six D's, okay? So there's all sorts of neat things that go on there, okay? So we have 18 electrons, and again, we fill lowest energy. Off-bow says fill lowest energy first, so we're going to go to these. And so now we're at 20, and remember, we have vanadium. Vanadium needs 23 electrons. So if we're going to go to vanadium with the 23 electrons, now we're going to go up here. Okay, and so we say one, two, three, because of Hun's rule. Hun's rule says they're not going to want to pair unless they have to. Now, what kind of question can I ask you about this? Well, I could ask you how many unpaired electrons are there. Well, let's talk about unpaired electrons. Okay, if I were to, whoa, hey, yo, let's undo that. Okay, if I were to, if I were to redraw this incorrectly, okay, incorrectly for a ground state, let's see. That shows us that we have only one unpaired electron. Well, that is incorrect for the ground state electron configuration. That This one should not be there. We should have three unpaired electrons in vanadium. And that is meaningful. There's the, the unpaired electrons are meaningful, chemically speaking. And so that's why we spend some time talking about this. Okay, but now what if... What if I say, well, instead of drawing the ground state electron configuration, what if I want to draw an excited state electron configuration? Well, an excited state electron configuration is any electron configuration that is not the ground state. Okay, so what I'm going to do to draw the, the ground, the, an excited state is I'm going to remove one from here, 
and I'm going to put that one up here. Okay, that's an that's an excited state. Or what if I take one and I put it here? Okay, that's an excited state. Or what if I take one and I put it? Um, what if I do this? Oh boy, the, now they're both spin up. That's an excited state. So another. Um, another definition of excited state is one that breaks those three rules. Those three rules being off-bow principle, Hun's rule, or the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay, so that is the ground state. Okay, you don't have to remove this electron. You could remove this electron or you could remove several electrons what if I remove two electrons right and I put those electrons now up here one two that's an excited state because it breaks off bow principle right we're not filling the lowest energy first there's a bajillion ways that you can break um, the the off bow principle there's a bajillion ways that you can um, make an excited state. So keep in mind when we think about electronic transitions that every time an electron goes from the ground state, and so I'll use this electron as my example, anytime it goes from the ground state up to the excited state, okay, that takes energy. But then when it goes back down here, that releases energy. Now up here, takes energy here releases energy and the amount of energy that it takes for that electron to do that's energy and that equals h nu and we can see that in an electromagnetic in a spectroscope in an electromagnetic spectrum and so that's what we're seeing when we see the spectroscope okay now imagine if all these electrons are moving up and down how many different lines you would see okay you would see a bajillion different lines in the spectroscope and you know you'd see for each one of these transitions whose energy happens to fall in the visible in the visible region so it's actually all interconnected here okay now one last thing before we um, wrap up on uh, on uh, electron configuration okay there are times when you will see instead of lines you will see boxes okay so it'll be like this 1s and then 2s and then 2p okay and these are again similar to orbital diagrams okay because people don't want to have to write it out so if we were to do fluorine as an orbital diagram like this it has nine electrons and so we do so we have two four six seven eight nine electrons that would be this representation of the same thing uh, if we were as opposed to doing it in lines this takes up a lot of space when we go here and do this this takes up less space so you'll see sometimes it written out linearly and then as we go away from the left hand side of the page we gain energy okay and so then after the two p's we get the three s's and then we'll get the three p's and then we'll get the four s's so they'll sh they'll actually do that out like that okay so that is everything that you need to know about electron configurations and orbital diagrams um and i hope that now the periodic table blows your mind in the same way that it blows mine have a great time